Hamlin law professor David Schultz once received a personal thank you letter from Justice Ginsburg. A short time ago, I spoke to him about that and the battle to replace her. And Professor David Schultz, great to see you. Thank you so much for joining us. My pleasure. Thank you for having me. You have an amazing story about an article that you wrote uh, about Ruth Bader Ginsburg being the fastest with her opinions at the Supreme Court. You sent her this article uh, a number of years ago, and you got a response. Tell us about that. Well, it was. It was an interesting letter because one of my students asked me, are there some justices faster than others in writing opinions? I said I didn't know. Did some research, found out it was Ruth Bader Ginsburg, wrote the article, published it, and sent it off to her, never expecting to hear back from her. And she wrote me this incredibly gracious, warm letter, thanked me for it. But the part that was so fascinating is she said that her family complained she's the slowest eater around, um, and she now had something that she could basically um, um, lord over them or use against them when they made that argument. And what I liked about the letter was fact that A, she responded, B, there was this touch of humility, but then also the rest of the letter, she explained that perhaps the rest of the justices weren't so slow, they were also working on other things. But it was just a letter that I think Which is a sign a of humility, of I think, and, and deference to her colleagues in a wonderful yes, gesture. No, yeah, 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 no question about it. She was basically still gracious towards her colleagues in the process and, and kind about basically sort of being what? Not trying to sort of hold her out as exceptional, but saying that we're all in it together. All right, and we're gonna put a link to the picture you sent us of, of that, that uh, letter, because it is a wonderful, wonderful letter. I wanna ask you about what happens now. Mitch McConnell is saying he's gonna have a vote as soon as possible on President Trump's nominee. Democrats say they don't want that. Can Mitch McConnell, Senator Mitch McConnell, just do that? Well, Mitch McConnell at this point, probably if he has the Republican votes, could get a vote um, on Trump's nominee either before the election or after the election. Um, with the Republicans holding a 53 to 47 lead, the Democrats would need to have four Republicans bolt and say no vote either before the election or even during the lame duck session after, the, after November 3rd. That's a pretty tall um, um, order for the Democrats to hope for. So I doubt they're going to be able to prevent that vote. Not impossible, but I doubt it. I think the question is now going to be, what's their plan B in terms of an alternative strategy for what to do? Okay. Well, they already have two senators, Senator Lisa Murkowski of Alaska, a Republican, and Senator Susan Collins, who say they don't want to vote on this, that the next president should choose it. So they might be able to get a few other two more votes, but they still, of course, have the problem with the vice president. If it's a tie, Vice President Pence would be able to cast the deciding vote. You're absolutely correct. It's possible that they could get Mitt Romney, which would then make it 50-50, which means Mike Pence could still cast the vote. Um, there is also um, another possibility that there's a special election um, in, in Arizona and that special election could potentially seat somebody earlier as opposed to next year. And if, for example, um, um, that were to happen where the Democrats were to pick up that seat, then they might have the four votes they need. But again, everything has to sort of click in line. Right. Uh, and of course, people you know, need to remember that the new, new, if it's a new president or if President Trump is reelected, they're not sworn in until the end of January. So there's a lame duck period or a period between the election and the swearing in. What impact do you think this is going to have on the election? Well, there's a couple different possibilities, and one of them we've already seen. It's already changing the debate short term in terms of what issues might be considered for the election. Now, I know right now everybody's thinking that her death and the nomination really sort of changes things for voters. One possibility is to say it doesn't change anything for voters, that voters have already made up their minds, which I think is true. Um, and at best, maybe this changes maybe the motivation for voting or mobilization. Um, a second possibility is, is this works to the benefit of Donald Trump, where it takes the discussion away from the coronavirus and the pandemic, puts it on the Supreme Court, of which I think might be better for him. So I think those are at least two of several different possibilities here. But at the end of the day, I think people have already made up their minds on Trump versus Biden. The real issue now is just the mobilization of who shows up to vote. All right, well, Professor David Schultz, always a pleasure. Thank you so much for joining us. My pleasure, thank you.